and then your oil is up to about this level right here. You run the oil through a filter into the turbine. On this turbine it's going up through the up through the shaft. Sorry. The shaft is stationary and we have a rotating uh, hub. Mm -hmm. You can do it either way. You can go stationary hub with the rotating mm -hmm. axle or this one has the shaft or axle uh, fixed. And then this is your Tesla turbine section. It's just a stack of discs, mm -hmm. uh, a few outer rim washers. There's a lot. Is, are any of you into aerodynamics? I've done a little bit, yeah. I've studied aerodynamics. Yeah. This works through aerodynamics principles rather than uh, typical turbine. Mm -hmm. uh, the aerodynamics principles between these plates is that the air or any gas or any fluid will adhere to the discs. And then once you inject air between the discs, you get a reaction between the incoming air in the discs because of adhesion rather than reaction or uh, you know your typical blades you have either an impulse or a reaction. The outer washers give you some impulse but other than that you can put different things between the discs. You could put blades between them to help the, the effect, let's say a reaction effect We've done a little bit of work in that area and it seems to help. Uh, anyway, I didn't glue all this together. Normally you can see it, you can see it in this little slot here. And it's just a silicone sealer. I use a high temperature type. So you'd put the sealer in here and then squash it with your outer ring. I developed two different nozzles for this one. We've got a single nozzle here. That's actually a, a nozzle from a MIG. Do you do any welding? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. MIG welding? Yeah. That's, That's where the wire comes out. I thought it was yeah. some of the Russian aircraft when you said MIG. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like tip, yeah. That's a MIG tip, so yeah. it's replaceable. Everything in here it can be taken apart. You can replace the tips with different size nozzles if you, if you want to go to smaller or larger. This one's like 40 thousandths, you can go up to 50 thousandths with your MIG tips. And then on this side, I made up a dual nozzle here. And what I did is I lined up the single in the center plate and then the, the dual nozzles or for the outer two plates. So, depending on how you set up your your gas system, you'd probably want to put gas solenoids on these two. Mm -hmm. So you could use one nozzle or two nozzles, one or the other, or the two simultaneously. And you can make up different nozzles uh, as you experiment with it. Any good? Oh, uh, your alternator's in here, okay. and then this is a dry sump. Normally, we would put the oil, the oil pump in this section. Mm -hmm. So, since Mike wanted it, I'll go to just put it out of there. Left this as a dry sump. Did you make the alternator yourself? Uh, the center part I did. The outer part, the uh, stator is a car alternator stator, one of your 60 amp stators. Right. And then the, the center is actually a bunch of circular uh, super magnets, mm -hmm. uh, samarium magnets. You can actually feel... Yeah, you should feel the resistance. Under. The resistance. The magnets, permanent magnets, actually resist any kind of a startup movement. And then that gets us to gas pressure. To get this to break the magnetic resistance, you need at least 180 psi. I don't have that. All I've got is about 110. 
well, and 110 will not break that free. So you have to start it manually right now with the air pressure we have. But once you hit, say, 180, I'm sure you'll have uh, bigger compressors. Uh, in your lab, you're going to have probably one of those big stand-up mm -hmm. compressors. Crank it up to 180 to 200, somewhere in there, and you can use either a single or both nozzles. And, and then once you've got it running, you can back off on the pressure. Yeah. Back off on the pressure, or you shut down one of the, one nozzles. Of the nozzles and run on just a single nozzle. But it depends on your load, too. When you load this thing down, Connections are down under here. Uh, you've got two connections for coil one, two for coil two, and then two for coil three. I separated the three phases of the stator into three different coils. Normally they wire them all together. I separated them so you can do uh, some interesting things with your wiring. You can put them in series or in parallel depending on what kind of power you want to take off of those. Uh, are any of you into electronics? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> well, you, when I have to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you put your meters on the on your coil terminals, you'll you'll see what's coming off. It's normally with a car alternator it's three phase AC and then that's converted on the back of the alternator to DC with the uh, have diodes on the back. So this will come off separate coils AC. Mm -hmm. And that's 60 hertz? Or? No, it'll, it'll depend on what your speed is. Okay. It'll be, uh, say if you're running 20,000 RPM, then that's going to be pretty much uh, about 20,000 divided by 3. Okay. And then you can take that and you can convert it to DC if you need, or use a transformer to step it up, step it down. Mm -hmm. Normally you'd put something like uh, one of those uh, buck boost uh, regulators on it. And buck boost, they, you can buy those anywhere on the, on the internet. Mm -hmm.